For most of us, on some level anyway, we've been hurt, disappointed, rejected, perhaps even abused, and we've gotten stuck at the word forgiveness. My guest today is gonna to talk about how forgiveness is not an option, it's a necessity. Stay tuned, Bridges starts now. Welcome to Bridges. I'm Monica Schmelter. I'm glad that you could join us. Today we're going to talk about a subject that is close to my heart, and that is the subject of forgiveness. And my guest is Anna McCarthy, and she has written a book called Forgiveness is Not an Option. Anna, so good to have you here today. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Now, I, I realize, biblically speaking, that forgiveness is not an option. Right. Yet, it can be such a challenge. Yes, <laughs> So I can. would love for us to delve into your book, and I thought just before we did that, maybe you could tell us a little bit about your your story and what prompted you to write the book? Sure. You know, I think a lot of your viewers can probably relate to my story on one level, level or another. I have experienced a lot of letdowns in life, a lot of heartbreak, and um, some of them were major, such as abuse and betrayal and mistreatment, and others were on the smaller end, just broken promises and broken relationships. And in my early 20s, I found myself very, very angry. And I was primarily angry at those who had hurt me, but I was really angry at God for seemingly allowing those things to happen to me. So I went on a three-year journey between me and the Lord, and I researched everything I could in the Word of God on abuse, on betrayal, on hurt and pain. And I needed to know his perspective of what had happened to me and if he was going to do anything about it. <laughs> and at the end of that journey, I found a side of God I'd never known before, mm -hmm. and it completely changed my life. And. That book was written in the process of that journey, and it was written primarily in the hopes of guiding others who find themselves in a similar situation mm -hmm. to hope. Yes, because you know, Anna, a lot of times we find ourselves stuck. Mm -hmm. And I know, I, and I, I will be very honest in sharing that sometimes when I've heard about the subject of forgiveness and in response to, you know, deep betrayals or abuse, mm. It can almost seem to the person, and I, I don't like to use this word, but to the person that's the victim or the person that's sure. been hurt, it can almost seem like they're the ones required to do all the work, <laughs> to forgive. And then it seems like, oh my goodness, but this young lady or this young man has been hurt or their husband or wife has cheated on them and we're expecting them now to forgive and like everything for the offender is just, oh, la-di-da, okay. Hmm. You know, what's interesting about that is there is a a deep, deep, profound joy in being able to walk through forgiveness in loving someone who's hurt you like that. Really? There's freedom there. There is, and I think, you know, people have said to me before, oh, forgiveness is easy, and I about wanted to fly out of my chair ready <laughs> for a hot fight, because anybody who could say that has either never really experienced hurt, or they have no idea what biblical forgiveness really looks like, because it's not easy, it's not. But when you're able to move your heart towards loving somebody who has done something like that, cheated on you, betrayed you, abused you, abandoned you, that's impossible without Jesus. Mm -hmm. Impossible. And once you do that, you're free from what they've done to you. Completely free. You're no longer the victim. You're no longer carrying the weight of everything they've done to you. And so, of course, we want to hold on to it and don't want to love and don't want to forgive. But that's a lie. Right. And we don't always know, Anna, you know, what else we can do. Do you know what I'm right. saying? Even sometimes right. being a Christian believer, if, if you're married to somebody and they've cheated on you or someone has rejected you or, you know, even if it's just in a friendship between uh, girlfriends or guy friends and you share secrets and you share time and you share your heart and, yeah. and then they talk about you behind your back or just reject you or, or take things that you've shared that are important and, and just spill them out to the open. Right. Sometimes, you know, we don't know what to do. When you use the words moving your heart to love someone that's hurt you, how in the world does a person do that? <laughs> well, the first part to any um, process of forgiveness, I think you have to give it validation. A lot of us are so wrapped up in wanting to pick up and move on yeah. that we suppress the hurt <laughs> and we don't give it a name. So the first step for me was naming what had happened to me. I had to give it a place in my life of, of importance. And once you speak that out loud and say, yes, this happened to me. Yes, it hurt me. I'm devastated. But Lord, you have your way. Amen. 
you have your way. Mm -hmm. And usually in that moment, he will prompt you to pray for that person, which is the <laughs> last thing you want to do. The last thing you want to do. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. But our hearts are hardwired to be softened towards those we pray for. Mm -hmm. So when you make the decision, because you don't feel like it, none of us feel like praying for somebody like that. No. No, the feelings come later. No, I, no. honestly, in my heart, I want bad things to happen Absolutely. to them. That's what I think it, at first until something supernatural's happened. It's like, you hurt me. I would like for you to hurt just a little bit right. too. Right, of course, <laughs> of course. When we make that choice to speak out of our mouth, mm -hmm. Lord, I choose to forgive them. I don't know what that's going to look like, but I'm going to choose to. So today I'm going to pray for them. And my first prayers for some of the people that had hurt me were simply, Lord, help me want to pray for them. Okay. I did that for months and then it evolved and it transitioned into, Lord, I pray they find you. I pray wow. they find the freedom that I am now walking in. I pray that you pursue them with your love and your hope so that they don't have to live in the bondage to whatever has happened to them that caused me to be a victim of them. Yeah. Because this book, as I understand it, Forgiveness is Not an Option that you've written, really has a, a leader's guide th that's available as well. And it can be like an 11 week journey for a church or a Sunday school mm -hmm. class or an individual to get to where we need to be, that place of yes. forgiveness. But one of the things I hear you, Anna, sharing out of your own struggle and your own journey is that really this isn't quick and easy and it's not just, oh, so-and-so cheated or my friend talked about me poorly and now I've lost all these friends due to right. this and that everything's okay. Yeah. You're saying I have to admit it. Mm -hmm. and be honest about it. So we don't just use Christianese like, oh, I forgive you, uh -huh. everything's yeah. okay. Yeah. Had you tried that? Sure. Okay. <laughs> sure, I was on the praise team at my church. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I have my Christian, joy to the Lord, praise God, all is well with my soul. We all know what to say. Yeah. We all know what to say, but how often are we really transparent? Mm -hmm. And one of the key things that set me free was being able to let all my guard down and be really honest. Mm -hmm. Because once you're honest, with people around you, it, it's not so habitual to hide it from God too. Because I think when we put up that front with people, we put up that front with God. Yeah. And you know, I've put up that front with God and I appreciate, Anna, that you shared that you were on the praise team saying, mm -hmm. I've got the joy of the Lord. And yep. you, know, you know, I've done all that and, and, and I really, and I didn't do it because I wanted to be a liar or dishonest. No, no. A lot of it was, a, I was in so much pain and I didn't know what to do about it. And I felt so sinful and evil for even having that unforgiveness and right. that pain in my life. Right. So you're saying honesty. Honesty. You have to be honest with God. Mm -hmm. Have to be honest with God. David in Psalms writes out of his own pain. He's one of my favorite authors in the Bible. And he writes, I will offer my broken spirit, O God, as a sacrifice. Mm. As a sacrifice. Which means he didn't hide it. He didn't shy away from it. He gave God full disclosure and used it as worship and a sacrifice. We don't do that today. No. We really don't. No. We don't give other people permission to, and we rarely give ourselves permission yeah. to. Yeah. We just want to put everything into a box with a pretty little bow yeah. and say, everything is well with my soul. I'm the perfect Christian. Mm -hmm. I have the perfect little Christian family. But you're saying in this book, forgiveness is not an option. You take us through a journey of practical tools. Yes. Because, you know, the other thing that we do to people is just say, well, just forgive. Right. You know, you're required to forgive. In five minutes. Yeah. And Be then, done. Yeah. And then this poor person <laughs> who's been abused or <laughs> rejected mm -hmm. is like, oh my gosh, so now all this happened and now I'm bad because I can't, I can't forgive. Do it. <laughs> right. Right. It's a journey. Uh -huh. It's a journey. And forgiveness isn't just one step. There are many steps, which is why we broke it down into an 11 week study, mm -hmm. because there's a lot that goes into it. Mm -hmm. A lot. What are some of the things that you share in the book? Well, the first step, which I shared with you earlier, was giving it recognition, mm -hmm. giving it place in your life, and then softening and moving our hearts towards just the choice of forgiveness. It, we can say it, but making our hearts choose it is a, an entirely mm -hmm. different thing. And you're saying one of the important parts of choosing to forgive is to try to move to be able to pray for that person. Mm -hmm. You make your lips say it. You make it. Mm -hmm. You make it. You will yourself. And it, it's excruciating. I'm not going to lie. It is. It is. I sat in my room and clenched my teeth to say those words because it hurt so bad. Mm -hmm. But I got to where I loved my God more than I loved me. 
Mm. More than I loved what had happened to me. And you know, in a sense, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Losing our life in him so that we can live. Right. And we don't think of it like that, that like I'm loving myself, but I'm loving myself and the pain and mm -hmm. what I've gone through and I'm giving that more validation and confirmation than I am worship to my God. Yeah. Mm. And it becomes an idol. Yeah. And we can't move past it. Right. You know, like a lot of people that are watching, you know, they've had a traumatic event 20 years ago, 10 years mm -hmm. ago, and it's as painful today as it was yes, then. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Absolutely. And rightfully so. Yeah. These things hurt. Yeah. These things hurt. We have to, we can't shy and dance around them and shy away from them and say, oh, it happened, but I'm fine. <laughs> we can't live like that. Yeah. Because it's, it's not true. Yeah. It's not true. Those yeah. things did matter. And if it's important to you, it's important to God. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that our pain does matter to Absolutely. God. Absolutely. You know, because one of the things that sometimes I wrongfully got out of messages on forgiveness is that my pain really didn't matter. Because <sighs> people will say, it's not about you. <laughs> it's about God. And and I would get, I get that. But yet, if you've really been hurt, and I'm not talking about a one-time friend not showing up for lunch sure. 15 minutes later. I mean, we're talking about abuse, Deep. betrayal, rejection, lies, gossip, slander. Those things are hard to handle. Mm -hmm. They are. They are hard. And God is for us. Mm -hmm. And we forget that. Yeah. And, and I love how it speaks in the Bible about he's the restorer of the brokenhearted. Mm -hmm. He brings beauty to ashes. He, he binds up the brokenhearted. That doesn't sound like a God who doesn't care about our pain. Right. That sounds like it was his primary goal in coming here. Yes. <laughs> yes, and he's not just giving that cheap and easy answer, just forgive. He's willing right. to do the work with do the us work. to heal us. We've got to take a break. We want you, though, to continue to stay with us. When we come back from this break, we're going to talk more about how forgiveness is not an option. Like many of you, I know the difficulty in having to forgive and let go of your past hurts. As a child, I experienced sexual abuse, and as an adult, I later had to walk through domestic violence. And it was something that I didn't think I'd ever be able to move past. I remember sitting in my apartment one night, crying out to God because I was so angry, lost, broken, and absolutely unsure as to what God felt about any of that. I told him that night, I said, God, I give up. My way isn't working. I'm ready to try it your way. And that was when my journey to forgiveness began. I researched everything I could that the Word of God has to say about abuse, about betrayal, about mistreatment. And I began to learn what God's perspective is of pain, what He views of those who hurt others, and what He viewed of me. He began to show me how out of my own brokenness I had begun to hurt others. And I began to see His love for me regardless, and began to accept His forgiveness of what I had done out of being hurt. And I began trusting God at a level that I'd never trusted Him before. In that process, I began to fully accept the Word of God as truth, not just part of it, but all of it. And when you begin accepting the entire Word of God and committing to it as truth, you inevitably accept forgiveness. You inevitably have to come to a point where you realize forgiveness isn't really an option. I'm now on the other side of this and I can confidently stand before you today and say that I've been able to forgive those who'd hurt me. I've actually come to a place of genuinely feeling love for them and it hasn't been easy, but it's been a process that I wouldn't trade. My relationship with the Lord now is something that far surpasses anything I ever thought possible because of who He was to me then and who He is to me now. I'm not angry anymore, I'm not hurt anymore, I'm not mistrusting and guarded. I'm now full of joy and full of a peace that doesn't make sense and full of a readiness to give and serve and be a part of other people's lives again. That's just a glimpse of what the other side of forgiveness looks like. I've been restored now to wholeness without an ounce of me missing anymore. My name is Anna, founder of Voice of One Ministries and the author of Forgiveness is Not an Option, and I challenge you to take on the project.
you are just joining us today on Bridges. We're talking about this book called Forgiveness is Not an Option, and it's written by Anna McCarthy, who's my guest today. And I think one of the most wonderful things about this book is that it's an 11-week journey to walk us through a biblical process to forgiveness. And Anna, we've been talking about a lot of difficult things, you mm -hmm. know, uh, just the pain that we face in this life. Um, the process that we have to go through to forgive. And I think one of the things that I hear you saying is that what we tend to do in Christian circles is just kind of minimize, avoid, sure. not talk about it, to say, praise the Lord, mm -hmm. it's well with my soul. Right. And you're saying if we can get over that and do yes. honest work with God, there's a chance for healing. Huge chance for healing and not just healing. You know, I think a lot of us just want the pain to go away. Yeah. That's all we want. Yeah. But it doesn't stop there. Mm -hmm. God promises in his word, he will restore what has been stolen. Mm -hmm. He will rebuild what has been torn down. He promises that. But we never get to that part. We want to stop at the, oh Lord, just take the pain away, make it stop. <laughs> but he wants to provide us with joy and a joy that comes even if trial comes again. Because once you're healed, there are still broken people who will be exactly what they are, mm -hmm. sinners. Yeah. <laughs> this world is filled with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, I, and really, when I look at life, Anna, not only have I been hurt by people, uh, but I've, I've also hurt people. Sure. And, you know, as a broken, wounded person myself, mm. I've inflicted uh, a lot of pain that perhaps I didn't sit down and intend to do it, but nonetheless, the effects are exactly the same. Yeah. And I know that I've been at places in my life that I've kind of been afraid, like, to be close to people because I, I might get betrayed again or right. uh, jaded, cynical, and all that stuff comes from unforgiveness and it disappointment. Does. It does, and a lot of people don't want to hear that. A lot of people don't want to believe that that's the root of it, mm -hmm. but it really is. Mm -hmm. Because when you're walking in unforgiveness, you're walking in fear. You're walking in fear of every potential heartbreak that could come knocking on your door. Mm -hmm. And you want to build up your walls and hide behind them and never venture outside them. Yeah. God can't use you when you live like that, first of all. But second of all, how does that prevent pain from happening again? It doesn't. <laughs> it, it's a weird misconception. And I bought into it for years. Mm -hmm. I lived like that. Admittedly, I will tell you I lived like that. But now that I've allowed him to strip me down to the bare bones of who I am and rebuild me from the ground up, my walls are not anywhere to be seen. They're completely gone, which makes no sense considering what I've walked through. And that doesn't mean that I don't get hurt again, because I do. Mm -hmm. People still hurt me and they still even hurt me in the same places I've been hurt before, mm -hmm. which is really difficult. But you know you're free when in that moment, your feet don't move. Mm -hmm. You're grounded. You don't doubt who you are. You certainly don't doubt who your God is. And you do not doubt that his word is true and that he will restore you and make right what has been wrong. That's freedom. Yeah, it is freedom. And it's something that I feel confident, Anna, that as people are watching, they want. Yeah. And yet we're talking about this book, Forgiveness is Not an Option, and how there's kind of an 11-week journey that people can go through. And so you're not telling me or anybody watching that every part of this will be pleasant. <laughs> nope. You're just saying that there's joy and freedom on the other side. It's so worth it. It is so worth it's it. It's worth it. It is so worth it. Uh, and that's my, 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 the heartbeat behind my message and everything I say is that I want people to know because we're afraid. We're afraid of opening up about Oh, you better believe this. it. We are. Oh, yeah. It's so much easier to just put that in a box and not open mm -hmm. it. But I'm telling you, if you think that your life is going to be fine, it won't be. It won't be. You're not going to walk in your calling in what God designed you to be unless you open it up and let him do the work. Mm -hmm. And it is so rewarding on the other side. So rewarding. So rewarding. Mm -hmm. How, uh, you said it was a th about a three-year journey for you? To it was. It was, but I didn't have, I didn't have a book walking That's me through right. it. That's right. That's so. right. Yes. Well, and you were learning as you went. I was learning because as you went. Because really one of the things that intrigued me about the book, Anna, is there aren't many books like this and, and like with a leader's guide that's available to people where churches and Sunday school classes, you know, because we talk a lot in Christian circles about serving others. And I think mm -hmm. that's wonderful, but sometimes we don't make the investment in ourselves mm. to do the business that we need to do to make our lives 
right before God, to allow him to do that deep work. Right. And really, that's what your book is about. Right. Taking everything before the Lord, and you even called it being broken, stripping everything away yeah. and then building you back up. Do you really feel like you're at your calling and that you're a better at a better place than what you were before the abuse? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I am better now. The person I am now is someone I always wanted to be, ironically, and was trying <laughs> to figure out how to be that person. God had all the makings in me for this person. But all of the stuff that happened to me pushed that person down. Mm -hmm. And what was left was the exact opposite of who I am. Mm -hmm. I am not an insecure, terrified, hiding, shy person. I'm not, mm -hmm. obviously. You don't look like it. <laughs> no. Well, were I'm you not, before? I was not before, but after betrayal came yes. and abuse came, yes, that's exactly who I was. So you were shy? Yes. And you were insecure? Very insecure. You're like the person that if someone hurt your feelings, did you cower in the corner and pout? Walled up, moved on. Mm -hmm. No one knew me. I was very guarded. I didn't like to meet new people. I didn't like going new places. I was very overprotective of my children and very, very nervous that my husband would, would do something to rock our relationship. Some sort of mistrust must be happening somewhere. I was mm -hmm. constantly on guard and it, and it fed my mind all these crazy thoughts. That's not me. Mm -hmm. And that's not how any of us are supposed to live. But if we allow the hurt that's been projected onto us to define us, we end up being that person. Yes, yes. And you know, I'm thinking as you say that, Anna, you know how many times that we talk to people who are just really rude or loud or, you know, all that stuff. Yes. <laughs> They'll say, well, that's just me. Mm -hmm. That's just how I am. And really, perhaps that's not really how they are. That's how we've learned to behave given the amount of hurt and sin and stuff that's been dumped on us mm -hmm. that we've just smiled and nodded through right. and not dealt with. Right, right. Well, and how many times did I say to people, I, I remember saying it, well, you don't understand. You don't know what I've been through. Mm -hmm. This is just who I am. Mm -hmm. I don't like new people. Mm -hmm. Deal with it. <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, I do. And that is not I do. me. That's it's not, not who I'm supposed to be. And that's a prison cell. Mm -hmm. It's so prison. That was a prison cell and a deception mm -hmm. that came over your life because of what you'd been through. Right. And because you didn't allow God to help you process that. You didn't know that that was possible at I the didn't. time. I didn't. I never heard a sermon that said, what to do when you've been molested. Yeah. What to do when somebody lies to you in, in the most profoundly heartbreaking way. Yeah. What to do when you're abandoned. I never heard a sermon about that. No, I haven't either. <laughs> no. I didn't, which is what propelled me to do the church-wide study of this book. Mm -hmm. Because I think, I think pastors are overwhelmed in a good way. Mm -hmm. Churches are flooded with broken people right now. Which is, is, which is wonderful. They should be. That's what churches should be. But I think pastors are finding themselves swimming a little bit mm -hmm. in, oh my goodness, how do I walk someone through something like this? Yes. And I was one of those people with a blank stare on the other side of a pastoral meeting looking at me like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, because no one's told them either. No. You know, it's no, like no one had told me. You know, yeah. we're all kind of born into this world. And then, you know, we, if we're Christians, you know, we read some in the Bible that we're supposed to forgive. So someone comes into the office that says, you know, I've been molested or my husband or my wife cheated or this profound trauma has happened. And we say, well, you know, we, we're supposed to love everybody and we're supposed to forgive. And we kind of nod. We know that. But the steps to get from here to there, you know, it seems like the insurmountable mountain. It feels like a setup for failure. Yeah. It did to me. Mm -hmm. It felt like a mountain I could never achieve. Mm -hmm. And so you want to give up or you want to fake it. Yeah. Those well, seem to be our options. Yeah. And for most of us, what we do is some combination, I think, of giving up and faking it. I agree. Like, you know, we give up whenever we can. <laughs> right. And whenever that's not an option, right. we just fake and smile and laugh. Right. And nod and say, praise the Lord. I've got the joy of the Lord. If we're in church, you know, we just say all that. Right. Right. Or we mask it by just being really rude and offensive with people. Right. Because we don't want them to get close enough to hurt us again. Oh, I know. And my heart is broken for the church yeah. because I remember sitting in pews every Sunday, just feeling numb, mm -hmm. singing songs I'd always sung, but there was nothing behind it. I was empty, broken yeah. and empty. And I now look in church congregations today and I just see a bunch of me. Mm -hmm. 
And that, that's what propelled me to write this yeah. and really encourage pastors to pick this up and use it as a tool because yeah. we all need to know how to do this. We no do. matter how great or how little, it's the same process. You know, and, and we all, I, I would think for the church is what a blessing, Anna, it would be to, instead of having everybody there that's hurting, you know, to have some people that have processed through this mm. and to be able to help other people, yes. you know, by doing this journey together to heal our churches so that the Christian body and Christian individuals can be who God wants us to Amen. be. Amen. Loving, Amen. open, honest, enjoying life and not shrinking back and being insecure because we're doing all this stuff with dealing with everybody's insecurities. Right. But people don't seem to be getting over them. No, no. And it's understandable yeah. when you look at what is in our culture today. Mm -hmm. We have a very, very wounded society. Yeah, there's pain, there's lying, there's crime, there's all mm -hmm. kinds of atrocious things that happen to us that we carry, the church isn't immune to that. No. We deal with it too. No, we do because we're all just people. Yes. <laughs> Even yes. if we know the Lord, we're people and we still sin and we still hurt one another. We've got just a, a couple of moments left. Tell me, is your life really like lots different than what it was before you went through this journey? World's different. Mm -hmm. World's different. I can stand in a situation that normally would have sent me into an insecure frenzy mm -hmm. and closed off and run and hide and I can stand there with joy and forgive on the spot and Amen. love on the spot and pray in my heart on the spot for that person. I never thought I'd be there, mm. but I'm there. And you are, and I, I can there. see the joy that's in your yes. face. Thank you so much for coming today. Absolutely, thank you it's for having me. It's been a blessing to talk to you. If you'd like to find out more about this book, today's show, you can go to our website at ctntv.org and check it out. If you would like to order a copy of today's Bridges episode, call 615-754-0039. Be sure to mention the program number on your screen. Visit www.facebook.com today and add Bridges Show as a friend. Log on to www.ctntv.org where you can make a prayer request, view our program guide, see who's on Bridges, or even watch one of Monica's latest teachings. Log on to www.ctntv.org. Well, we have talked today about how forgiveness is not an option, but rather a necessity. And one of the things that I absolutely love about this book is that it, it's an 11-week journey that goes through a biblical process to give you and to give me the tools that we need to process through and to heal from some of the drama and the trauma that's gone on in our lives. Sometimes we can work to minimize things and we just want to make everything seem nice and that we're just nice little Christians and that everything is A-OK. -okay. And sometimes deep down, everything is not A-OK. -okay. But God does promise that he's come to heal the brokenhearted and that he wants to bind up our wounds and restore us. I just invite you to open up your heart today to God and to allow him to do this work in your life. We are out of time. We've got to go, but we say goodbye and God bless you. Thanks for watching Bridges. 